Um, Minister, um, I'm sure you will accept that I suppose since the 1990s uh, this House has debated uh, many scandals and many allegations and many issues um, surrounding uh, sexual abuse, uh, particularly of children and young people, uh, and rape of young people, uh, which happened across the country in different contexts, uh, within the church from diocese to diocese, uh, within sport, particularly in swimming, and indeed within schools itself. And there's an ongoing inquiry, for example, into child abuse in Northern Ireland. We've had many inquiries here, uh, and we've had many commissions of inquiry in the Republic. One just has to recall Klein, Ferns, Dublin, just to illustrate a number of examples. Uh, and everyone in this House was very clear in terms of condemning that abuse, uh, and in there, indeed in condemning anybody who would have been complicit in the cover-up of, of that abuse. And I'm particularly mindful of the very strong comments and strident comments of Deputy Mary Lou MacDonald. Back in 2009, uh, which is a significant year now, as we know, uh, in the context of the report of abuse in the Dublin Diocese, uh, when Deputy Lou, Mary Lou MacDonald said um, that anyone, including Gardaí, found to be complicit in the cover-up of child abuse must be arrested and made to face the full rigours of the law. And there's other significant comments made by the Deputy on that occasion. Uh, and I was struck that if you substituted the word uh, Sinn Féin leadership or Sinn Féin authorities uh, instead of the church or Gardaí or others, I wonder would people come to the same conclusion in terms of what should happen. But it suffice to say that allegations were ignored across the board for, for too long and many, many people were emotionally scarred and traumatised as a result. And one of the big issues for many people in those abuse scandals was the fear of coming forward, the fear of being stigmatised, the fear above all of not being believed and being undermined uh, by those who would have abused them. When the Maria Cahill episode occurred, we saw similar patterns emerging of attempts to undermine the credibility of the, of, of the person herself, an online campaign <coughs> against her, um, and uh, undermining her character and so on. And this week we've had the heartbreaking account of Paddy McGahan's story on Spotlight on Tuesday night. He uh, got courage after, and he, he's, he's, he, the Maria Cal uh, stuff was the trigger for him uh, to go public uh, on, on, on the issue. And I think both of their actions have encouraged others to come forward. Fundamentally, the people want uh, justice and they want the truth. And I think it's very important that we be clear that there is a responsibility on all involved um, to obey the law. Uh, and to respond to what the legal requirements are. And I was very struck um, that on LFM, FM yesterday, uh, the leader of Sinn Féin, Deputy Adams, uh, made an extraordinary comment to the effect that um, when he was asked was it not a breach of child uh, first and breach of uh, uh, guidelines in terms of protecting children not to report this, and he said, first of all, in order to make a statement to the guards, someone needs to substantiate it. Now, this Question, is, fun please, this is fundamentally not the case. Uh, and in fact, there are two elements to this, a criminal investigation, but also there's the issue of reporting this to the HSE at the time and now TUSLA, in terms of the fundamental issue of protecting children right now in the context of, of uh, those who abused, they're still at large, and could of course abuse people within family, neighbourhood or community. Now the fundamental point I want to put to you, Minister, that given the fact that we have faced up to this before in terms of different institutions, Surely it is time, and I would ask the government to give serious consideration to establishing a commission of inquiry um, into the allegations of the Spotlight programme and, into, and, and, and wider issues of how Sinn Féin, as an entity, um, dealt with allegations of um, child abuse. Thank you. And we know from Ferns and we know from Klein that where cooperation is forthcoming, these inquiries can be very expeditious, can be efficient and can get to the truth of it. Uh, where there is cooperation and full disclosure and provision of information um, to uh, such a commission of inquiry. Thank and you, there's different ways of doing that, and I think it's time that we had one. I call on the Minister. Uh, could I thank you, uh, Deputy Martin, and I want to agree with you on the points you've made in relation particularly to uh, the, the importance of anybody who has information 
to bring it forward to the relevant authorities. Um, and whether that be the Garda Síochána, Tusla, the HSE, there is an obligation on anybody who feels that children are at risk in any way and has information to suggest that children are at risk, that they should bring that information forward. And certainly the courage of Maria Cahill and indeed of Paddy McGahan uh, in coming forward uh, I, I think inevitably will uh, facilitate other people and give other people the courage to do so as well. And that certainly is the general experience uh, when there are programmes like the Spotlight programme. And indeed, um, there was a representative from the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre on radio this morning indicating that, uh, that they have an increased number of calls. Um, so it is vital that uh, information is brought forward. And I would agree with you that um, there are questions to be answered by Sinn Féin in relation to the information that they have, uh, and particularly in relation to information that there may be people abroad in our society, whether in this country or anywhere else, uh, who may be a risk to children currently. And uh, the Children First guidelines and all of the various measures that have been implemented uh, give clear guidance as to what should be done. And um, I would also um, question uh, Mr Adams in particular in relation to what he said that uh, he needed more substantial information. If you have any concern at all that children are at risk then you should go to the Gardaí. So there are certainly uh, questions to be, to be answered and um, there are particular questions as well around um, what, you know, if these, as, as, as has been admitted, there were such um, internal inquiries, if I can use that nice phrase, uh, in relation to uh, kangaroo courts is another term that's used. Um, if there were such, such practices, then are there people in Sinn Féin who have information as to um, who attended those courts, uh, where they are now, uh, what information is available uh, in order to protect children? So um, I think there are a great deal of, uh, of questions to be asked. I think there will be more information will come forward. Um, certainly uh, the question you've raised around the Commission of Inquiry um, is one that, that can be considered. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, there is certainly, I think, an onus on Sinn Féin to give the information to the appropriate people. Uh, and, uh, to, and, and that is the first obligation. And it's a very serious obligation because, um, rightly as you've said, and indeed many members of, of Sinn Féin and others in this House have frequently raised issues around child protection. Uh, and there are issues that we all take very seriously. And as I said, we have put a lot of measures in place, both this government and I will acknowledge previous governments. Um, but we cannot, on the one hand, be concerned about child abuse in the past or in other institutions. If we have information, then we have a duty to bring it forward to the appropriate authorities. Thank you, Minister. A supplementary uh, question from Deputy Mayor Martin. The only way it can come forward now is through a Commission of Inquiry. Uh, and it could be on, on, on a module-by-module -module basis. Uh, and that, uh, uh, in this jurisdiction, um, you know, alone uh, could be very revealing. For example, um, surely people would come forward in the context of a Commission of Inquiry and say who was involved in that kangaroo court in 2002. Who were the people who attended it and carried out uh, uh, the, the uh, in, 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 in internal investigation, uh, essentially complicit in preventing it from getting to the Gardaí. Because as, without doubt, and I've talked to people who, who are in uh, the child law area, uh, there's a duty to find in legislation and interpret in case law to be proactive um, in their investigation of allegations of abuse. Why? To protect uh, children from potential abuse now or into the future. Questions would have to be asked, for example, where are those alleged perpetrators now? Well, these people in 2002 exiled this person in the full knowledge that the person had committed abuse, not just to Paddy McGann, but to others. And the bottom line is, what access did that perpetrator and others have to children in their daily lives through family or employment? Thank you. That's why allegations of abuse have to be investigated, to show that children are not exposed um, to potential um, abuse. So any information that's held by Sinn Féin or their associates, there's a legal obligation that that knowledge or possession, any possession of that information should be provided to Tusla now and indeed to, to, to the Gardaí in order to protect 
uh, children uh, are, are, who could potentially be exposed to further abuse uh, by an individual or individuals Thank you. against wh uh, whom allegations um, have been made. Just to make the point, uh, uh, last Corla, that the Commission of Inquiry gives it, and, and as we know, some of the Commission of Inquiries have held their hearings in confidential settings, for example, uh, and then have produced comprehensive um, reports to, give, to shine a light on what occurred, the practices, what happened, what didn't happen, uh, and who was it complicit in the cover-up of very grave um, situations and very grave um, allegations, because the bottom line is in 2002, in 2000, which isn't, uh, you know, not too long ago, all of this was deliberately kept from the Gardaí and from the HSE, deliberately, premeditatively kept. And it defines any credibility that senior people within the ranks of Sinn Féin didn't know what was going on here, uh, given uh, the circumstances surrounding the case itself and the personalities involved. Thank you, Deputy. It's just not credible. But in 2009, we learned that the leader of Sinn Féin, on his own admission, knew about this and didn't refer it to the, to, to the HSE at the time and didn't refer it to the Gardaí at the time. It's as plain and simple and straightforward as that. And no satisfactory response or explanation has come from the leader of Sinn Féin. So the only other, and, and none will come, because we're tired of the mantra of please come forward. These question people themselves know. So question. a statutory basis is the only way forward now in terms of trying to get to the bottom of this and getting to truth. Thank you.